What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Above and Below, a Salt Life podcast. I'm your host, Kieran Anderson, and back on with us, we have Colin McPhillips. What's up, Colin? How are you? I'm doing great. Hey, guys. How's everybody doing out there? What's up, dude? What have you been up to? I have been surfing, chasing swell, running down to Baja, chasing cold right point breaks. It's been freezing cold in California, but we've had a really good run of waves, so that's kind of about it. I know. That that last swell was so gnarly. It was like almost two months of just perfect waves, which we haven't seen in a long time. So that was pretty insane. I got stuck at work a bunch. So I was kind of bummed, like watching my friends just score. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, I was at work, but where'd you surf around, uh, this, did you surf like trestles and stuff? I was, I was on trestles. Yeah. Churches and middles was doing a J Bay impersonation. And, uh, pretty much when, when it's like that, it's, it's kind of like my favorite zone to, to be. And I just, I, I don't miss it. Like I was skipping invites to go to like really good other spots just yeah. not to miss my home spot oh for so sure. I, I, had a, I had a great time it was awesome well enough with the cold water dude let's get into your recent trips you went to fiji recently yeah yeah i was in fiji i did three weeks there uh in november no way and when you go there you're you're like doing a camp right yeah so when i'm there um when i, I i'll say it's working even though it's, it's about the best job you could possibly have in the world um, I'm there working for Dave Kalama and it's his camp called Kalama camp. Yeah. And so it's me, Dave Kalama, Tom Carroll, and we are doing private coaching, private instruction, um, for the people that sign up for the camp. And it's just the most awesome thing in the world. Dude, that sounds so freaking epic. Well, for the people that are listening in real quick, um, give us an overview on yourself. Obviously you teach these camps. Uh, you're a professional surfer and you have a huge history of who you are. Um, but yeah, give us a little overview on yourself, where you're from and what you do. All right. My name's Colin McPhillips. I am from San Clemente, California. I've been a professional surfer pretty much my entire life. I've got three world titles under my belt, all kinds of uh, U.S. titles, contests, this, that, magazines, movies. Just I've just uh, really... Um, been fortunate to turn my my love and passion of surfing into a complete lifestyle and I've over in the last 10 years have really gotten into like private coaching private lessons and uh, really I really enjoy getting people on their first wave showing them the pure love I have for surfing and riding waves to share that with somebody it's one of the coolest things you could ever experience so I've been very fortunate to to work in Fiji. I do a lot of work down in Baja on the East Cape. And um, I've got a really cool group of people that I work with. And then I'm very fortunate that my good friend Dave Kalama has this awesome camp. Everybody out there, check it out. It's called Kalama Camp. And um, he's got the best place in the world to do it, the best island, Motu Island. And it's just pure joy getting to, getting to work with him. Dude, it's so rad that um, your whole life has evolved around surfing. And so many people get away from surfing or are like, I'm going to move inland or whatever. Once you do finally retire, like there, I know multiple people that are just like, I'm going to go surf every once in a while, but to be able to have that lifestyle and go find different ways to pursue your career. Cause we all know, um, unless you're Kelly Slater or the top 1%, you're not going to be uh, a professional athlete on tour your whole entire life. So it's cool to like um, speak to a legend like yourself that goes and, gives it back to the community and gives it back to people um, and be able to have that hospitality and provide that to everyone learning how to surf or um, experts too. It's freaking amazing. No, absolutely. It, it, it's like the coolest thing in the world. I mean, getting a little kid on his first wave ever, that's like never even been in the ocean and watching his excitement, watching his parents get so stoked on the beach or vice versa, getting somebody who's 65 years old and it's like, you know, I'm going to surf for the first time and getting them up on waves with different techniques I have and different equipment is yeah. lots of the thing. And, um, just seeing their eyes just light up like freaking stars. It's so cool. It, it, it makes you feel about as good as winning some contests I won back in the day. I get the same pure enjoyment now with the, doing this kind of work. So and I'm in surfing my brains out in awesome places. It's, it's pretty darn good. I know you're kind of getting both the best worlds. Like you're teaching, you're helping people pursue their passions. And then you're like, Hey, the waves are kind of firing right now. I'm going to get a couple of waves too. That's so epic. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And what's super cool too is 
the crew that I've worked with, you know, I've become friends with them now. I mean, we've been working together for lots of years, different people, different clients. And they, they kind of like, Colin, go. We want to we want to watch you ride waves, too. Not just get us on waves like you ride some because we, we want to watch you and learn from your approach also. And we just want to watch. So I'm out, you know, in, in epic waves in Fiji. And it's like I get to sneak some in. So it's it's, uh, it's long days in the water helping teaching but i'm rewarded with getting to sneak some waves too so it's pretty great yeah for sure i think it's really important to actually watch um athletes no matter if it's longboarding shortboarding whatever it is to to dissect how they surf and obviously you're a world champ or um you know for me i like shortboarding and watching my friends who have been on ct uh surf in front of me you really understand like how they're hitting the lip or, or timing sections or doing turns, looking over your shoulder. Um, and it makes you a better surfer as well. Um, when you get to watch that and provide that to your clientele. So it, it's rad to be able to like go on those trips and teach people, but also, uh, providing the entertainment that they can watch you surf too, because that's a huge way of learning, especially for the people that learn, um, from visual learning. Oh, absolutely. You're hundred percent correct. I don't think you've been on for what, like six months or so. We, I mean, it's been a while since I talked to you last, but, um, I think you, you go to Fiji every single year, right? Or multiple times a year to do this camp. Yeah. Yeah. I go, I go every year. Um, I always go for three weeks in November and then sometimes a, a week in May or a week in September, but I've been averaging three to four weeks a year on yeah. Nomotu Island for, for numerous years now. It's, it's, a uh, it's a blessing. It's pretty, I'm like the luckiest guy in the world to get to do this for, you know, stoke people out. It's actually a job and yeah. I'm in one of the greatest places on the planet. Dude, Fiji is so amazing. It's so beautiful. There's good fishing, there's good diving, there's good surfing, whatever you want to do there. It's, it's, it's amazing. How the heck did you end up getting in the circumstance where you get to go to Fiji uh, for multiple weeks out of the year? It all comes down to my good friend, Dave Kalama. So, so Dave, you know, his background is, is crazy. One of the original pioneer toe surfers, Jaws, you know, huge crossing, sup, this, that. He's pretty much pioneered everything extreme from day one. And he started working really closely um, with the island of Namotu and doing private lessons and private clients, which turned into, you know, renting full weeks at a time, turned into starting his own camp. So he owns, you know, they're his weeks, his camp, Kalama camp. Um, if you're on the island for the, the weeks of his camp, you are at Kalama camp. You've signed up through him. And I was fortunate enough to be good friends with him and him asked me, like, hey, would you like to come over and, um, and help me at my camp? And I said, absolutely. And then that turned into one week to two weeks to three weeks. And it's just been ongoing. And we, we're good friends and, and we work great together. And I'm just very fortunate that it's all clicked. So during those three to four weeks that you are there, is every single week a new camp or are people there for multiple weeks at a time? How does that work? Every single week is a new camp. There are guests that do multiple weeks, um, but each week, the majority of the island, it's just like a normal, the majority of the island leaves, you know, the, the 22 guests leave and 22 new ones come. Yeah. So, so each week is a, is a new, a new bunch of people, you know, and it's pretty cool. We've got people that are coming from, you know, Aspen, from, you know, Malibu, from Maui, from Oregon, all these different places. And they've all come together and lots of them are, they've been coming every year together. So like I said, everybody's friends. So it's like, you're on this like week long surf shoot with a bunch of friends and you're just helping them and stoking them out and just putting them on. The most waves you can and the right way in the right spot is basically what we try and do. Yeah, that's that's insane. That sounds so fun, dude. Um, I've actually never spent time on the Motu Island ever. I've been to Fiji. I've surfed cloud break and some waves around there. But um, what is the process like um, getting to Namotu? Would it be like going to Kandui where you have to take a boat there? Or how does it work for um, everybody traveling around the world to get to that location? I will say it is it is so turnkey and easy for arriving on this private little island. The island's small. There's only 26 guests at a time. It's a small, wow. little, very intimate island, and it, it's so easy. Going from LA, you hop on a red uh, red eye flight. You leave LA at midnight. You land in Nandi at like 6 a.m. You get picked up. 
you go have a nice breakfast in the harbor, you get done, you hop on a boat about 10, 30, 11. It's about a 45 minute boat ride out to the island. You step foot onto the island. All your luggage has already been put to your beret, to your room, <laughs> yeah. and boom, vacation surf trip starts right there. So it's, it's pre- they have built a turnkey experience, and I've been all over the world. That is, I mean, no one could touch what they do. It is so perfect. The food is so good. The people are so cool. It's just turnkey and perfect. I recommend anybody that has an urge of a trip of a lifetime. Um, Go to Namotu Island. Check it out. Look at the pictures. Look at my Instagram. I post stuff from the island all the time because it's just, it's like anything, any picture you take is, is picture perfect. You can't, you can't go wrong there. The water's gorgeous. The water's 85 degrees. The air's 85 degrees. There's no bugs. There's no mosquitoes. And the beer's ice cold and the food is unbelievable. Let me ask you this. What about for families? I mean, let's just say that my girlfriend wanted to go or somebody else's family wants to go that didn't want to surf. What kind of activities do they provide to you at Nemotu that you can do with your family? So it's awesome. So if, if you've got a girlfriend or a wife that doesn't surf and they, they've got a gorgeous pool to hang out at, they've got yoga teachers that do yoga twice a day. No way. You've got all access to go fishing. So besides having like professional surfers like myself there who are working with you, they also have professional fishermen that are there just catching fish for the island. Dude. If you're a guest and you want to go fishing, you can go fishing with the fishermen every time they go out and go fish with professional fishermen. Um, you could other other activities. You they they've got things you can go. You take you to the main island and do some crazy hikes through the up to waterfalls and through the the jungle. You can go to other islands to explore. You can go to this place called cloud nine. It's a floating bar in the middle of the ocean. It's like the coolest thing you'll ever see. You could do little excursions there. Um, basically everything ba- is kind of based around the ocean and going in the water because you're, you're on this little Island. So besides the swimming, the snorkeling is unbelievable. The pool activities, there's lots you could keep busy with, read a book under a, tr- under a nice, you know, some shade. You could really kill time throughout the day in pure enjoyment doing lots of things besides just surfing how is the diving there is it pretty insane yeah it's it's unbelievable the water i mean you you basically look down and it's like you're in a swimming pool but looking down at bright coral and like there's different areas that you that you would go snorkel where there's no waves and just the colors of the different types of coral they just pop out at you they're so bright and alive it's all a living coral too um it's pretty rad i mean like i said it's an experience that I mean, I've gone all over the world and there's not many places that can compare. Yeah. I feel like um, a lot of people, when they think about Fiji, they think about cloud break and they see these videos of cloud break at 30, 40 feet and uh, that that's the only wave there. But Nemotu offers, um, you know, beginner level level waves all the way to expert level waves where you can take a boat over to cloud break, right? Yeah, they, they offer, I'd say Nemotu is so good. Um, there's five breaks with right off the island and... They all, on a small size, are complete beginner-friendly, user-friendly. They get a little heavier on big swells. Of course, that same little mushy left when it's 8 to 10 feet has got some power behind it. But every wave off the Motu is very user-friendly. If you want the super gnarly stuff, you could hop a boat. You're 20 minutes of cloud break. Um, but to tell you the truth, I stay in my zone. When I'm spending all this time there, I've got my nooks and crannies off the Motu that I absolutely love. I don't leave my island. I surf all my spots around my island and absolutely love it. The crowds are minimal. I mean, we're surfing breaks by ourselves still. It's it's paradise, plain and simple. So what is, what is it like um, staying at Nemotu for the people listening in that maybe are just getting into surfing and stuff? Are you having to take a boat to go surf or can you paddle out straight from Nemotu to a break um, with somebody like yourself and go shred and get good waves? Yes, you, there's two spots. There's there's Nemotu lefts on one side of the island, and there's swimming pools, which is a right on the other side of the island. And both spots you can paddle to. I'm, I mean, it's a bit of a paddle, but if you'd like a nice warm up in the morning, I always like to do it in the morning because it like gets your blood going. I always yeah. paddle out. Um, it's a you know I'd say it's a five minute paddle, not killing yourself. Um, so if you don't want to hop in a boat, you could take a thirty second boat ride and jump out, or you could paddle. Um, either way, but that's what's so cool at Nemotu. There are waves right off that. You could be sitting at the bar watching people surf, watch people foil, where 
other places you go, the only action you're seeing this is you got to take a boat to places. You got to be yeah. out there and spend time on a boat. You know, the Motu, you walk right out your room and boom, you're looking at waves. So it's pretty special. And then the Motu, obviously, they probably have um, people on the island, right? If you get a scratch from the reef or whatever, they're taking care of you um, with medical assistance and then meals throughout the day, everything like that. They offer everything. Yes, they offer everything. It is a turnkey experience. I've seen some pretty good injuries. There's there's always a doctor every week yeah. on the island to, you know, obviously, if you've got some serious issues, you're going to want to get out of there and go to a hospital. But you've got a doctor on site to treat you, to get you get you patched up as good as possible to, to move on to a, a hospital. But yes, 100% safe doctor. The food is off the charts. I yeah. mean, if you're just eating so much fresh caught fish, I mean, there's no shortage of food. I, I literally have to make rules for myself. Like, okay, you're only allowed two meals a day, not four, because it's just nonstop <laughs> eating. It, it's, it's, it's really, really cool. Um, but yeah, it's, um, it's as turnkey first class as things get. And you are on this little patch of sand, just this little beautiful island in the middle of the ocean. It's amazing what they've created there. And they're, they're packing you lunches when you're going and surfing and stuff, huh? Um, what they do is if they, they don't pack it, I mean, you can if you want, but we're so quick from a surf spot back to the island, you can just come back and eat whenever you want. Like what one of the things I always do, because I'll get up in the dark and then I, I'm like usually first one in the water, but my first session is like till like 5.30 in the morning till like 10 a.m. usually. So I'll order breakfast before I go in the water. So I come in and my breakfast is waiting for me. And I just scarf it down. But I've had plenty of times there where I come in to get my breakfast and I'm sitting down like for me and Dave Klamath, we've been in the water teaching all morning. We go to eat our breakfast and the lunch bell rings. It's like we're it, it's noon and I've literally ate my breakfast, scarfed down lunch and then back in the water. Like we're talking 10 hour days. It's um it's pretty, pretty magical there. That sounds insane. I, I take it that you're always going to go back but, as much and many times as you can. Oh it, yeah, it is. Um, it is absolutely a place. I hope I could I could go to every year for the rest of my life. But I mean, huge. I, I will give a huge thank you to my good friend Dave Kalama and his camp, Kalama Camp. Everybody, it's it's Kalama Camp with a K. So camp with a K. Check it out online. Um, I will tell everybody listening though, it is it's uh, a full waiting list. You can't just sign. I mean, there's a long waiting list to get on. Yeah. because there's only so many people each week, you know, um, but it is quite a, uh, quite an experience. I mean, I, I mean, I'll, I'll back it 100%. It is top notch as good as it gets. And, and there's so many different um, areas that you can surf and there's so many different swell directions that you can get to because it, you are on an Island, right? So you can get, uh, yep. all those places like restaurants or new two lefts. And then you can all of a sudden go to uh, cloud break and get a sick left or whatever. Like there's so many different swell directions. You're basically not going to get skunked unless there's no swell at all. Right. I, I say 100% you're correct. And I would even go further and say, even when there's no swell, I've been there when there's like, it's like flat at, and then the tide pushes in. It's like, Whoa, it's breaking just with the tide change from low tide to high tide. There's now a, perfect waist high wave like, yeah. yeah it's small but if you ride if you're willing to ride certain equipment there is a wave to ride every day if you foil it is foil heaven there i mean we're talking we're riding waves for three minutes long on our foils and then get picked up on a boat drop back off it's, it's <laughs> called the chairlift it's like you're snowboarding but we're on foils if you're a kiteboarder or a windsurfer it does get windy there you know you're on an island in the middle of the ocean when the wind blows, I mean, there's, if you are an all around water enthusiast and do all the different sports, you could surf, kite, windsurf, foil. There's, there's never a dull moment on the island. There's something for you to do at all times. Yeah. So if, if somebody does want to book a, a trip and come surf with you and be a part of that camp, how do they do that? Yeah. You would go through, you would start out with probably going through waterways because they handle all the bookings. And then you could also go on, Kalama Camp with, with a K, K-A-L-A-M-A-K-A-M-P, KalamaCamp.com. Check it out there. You're going to send in, probably, you know, send in your info, this, that, and you could start. That's the perfect start. Um, start by checking out Kalama Camp, checking out Waterways Travel, who handles all the bookings for the island, and then you just go from there. Epic.
Sounds easy enough. I yeah, like right. It. Yeah. Um, any? Do you have any trips planned coming in? Um, I've got nothing to, right now. I'm just still on the on the winter time chase at home. I just want I want Northwest swells to light up trestles and some of the points down in Baja. I like to go. Yeah. And then as soon as we those south start coming up springtime, you know my my eyeballs are on some of my my favorite spots down south um, that I just can't wait to start. And then my my kids have a lot of surf competitions that I'm going to. My daughters competing all the time kai's got he just did his, the first uh wsl three star that was just up at pismo beach this last week uh did great got 17th won a bunch yeah. of heats dax has like state champs coming up and nationals and all these events so besides my my personal stuff i've got all this stuff with my kids of surfing this that contest travel you know going to Cocoa beach with kai florida for an event stuff like that so i'm i've got i was going over my calendar last night and the next you know, three, three to four months is pretty darn booked, but it's, it's all good stuff. I'm looking forward to it all. <laughs> That's so Yeah, epic. absolutely. How can we tag along with your journey? You have Instagram and stuff like that. Shout it out so we can uh, keep tagging along and watch your. Yeah. Check me out on Instagram. It's just, yeah. Check me out. Colin McPhillips. Um, same thing on Facebook. And, and I try my best to put stuff up there and, and keep on it as best I can. Yeah. It's always fun to like follow you guys and see what, like I follow Kai and Dax and everyone and I'm like, dude, this is so sick. Like Kai just got back from Baja and he goes down there all the time and Dax is surfing contests. And it's just so fun to like see your family and what they're doing and how uh, progressive you guys are getting and like doing stuff at all times. It's so rad to see. Um, and they obviously they learn it from you, like going to Fiji all the time and like getting after it and like teaching people. And that's just a lifestyle, right? Like it's so fun to travel. Um, it's Fiji's amazing. Absolutely. Like Baja's amazing. Just get out there, go do it, um, and meet new people along the way. Absolutely, that, that's my theory. Get out there, freaking just live salty. I mean, Salt Life has the best. It's best saying live salty. I'm pretty much am, am trying to base my life off that saying. Yeah. Live salty. Get your gills wet every day. It just makes it makes life better. Way better. Plain and simple. Way better. Well, um, Colin, thank you so much for coming on again, dude. It was amazing talking to you again. And uh, thank you, everybody, for listening in. Uh, we'll catch you next time on Above and Below. Colin, we'll catch you hopefully soon, man. All right. Sounds good. Hey, it was great chatting. Everybody out there, like I said, live salty, man. Get after it. Rad, dude. Have a good day. Uh, and we'll catch everybody soon.